Astronomy in Reverse by Pansley Chapter 6 Hero The trip back to Queens is done mostly in silence, Peter becoming quieter and quieter the later it gets, growing tired and more sluggish after the long day he's had and the emotional conversation that came after. The kid dozes on the bus ride home, falling asleep against Bucky's side while protectively clutching his backpack. Bucky lets him, lets him take a quick nap to recharge and get back some of his energy, but wakes him when they're halfway home before he can completely ruin his sleep schedule, or his neck for that matter. Kid, Bucky repeats, jostling Peter a little harder. Peter, come on. If I let you sleep anymore, you'll be up all damn night. <sighs> Peter groans unintelligibly, trying to burrow his face in Bucky's side, but the man sighs and plucks him off his jacket like an aggressively clingy chimpanzee. No! Peter whines, collapsing pitifully in his own seat. I don't want I'm tired. You'll be up at 4 a.m. if I let you sleep any longer, says Bucky, not letting the amusement he feels tinge his voice, doing his best to sound stern with Peter, giving him that exaggerated puppy and look. Ten more minutes, he begs. No. Five more minutes? No. One more minute. Why don't you tell me how school was? Bucky says instead, knowing that the best way to wake Peter up is to get him talking. Did you get your English review back? Realizing that this is one battle he won't win, Peter sighs and straightens up in his seat. Yeah, I did okay on the essay part, but Miss Bernstein gave me another entire booklet of multiple choice questions to practice for the final. That's what me and Ned were originally going to do at his place. Buggy nods, recognizing the slight change in Peter's tone that means he's found something the boy is excited to talk about. What else did you guys have planned? That does the trick, and Peter livens up as he sets off on a long-winded rant about all the things he and Ned have in common, the things they've talked about doing, how excited he is to see his new friend's place, and geek out over his supposedly impressive collection of electronics. Peter brightens up enough to keep talking through the rest of the bus ride, managing to stay awake until they make it back to Queens. But he quickly grows tired again as they begin walking back to their apartment from the bus station, and Buggy has to slow his pace so the boy can keep up with him, Peter getting quieter and quieter until he stops talking altogether. Almost old, Pete, Bucky says, wrapping his arm around the kid's shoulders. Come on, keep talking. You said this Liz girl was peeved you turned down joining the decathlon. Not really peeved, Peter mumbles sleepily, teetering as part of him seems inclined to lean further into Bucky's side, seeking warmth. I think she was mostly disappointed, but Ned says he'll join if I do. Bucky's hand tightens on Peter's shoulder blade. He hates that the boy can't have everything his heart desires, that they don't have the money for Peter to join as many clubs as he'd like, that Bucky wouldn't be able to sign his approval even if they did. Peter is so deserving of all those things, and it eats away at Bucky to know that he can't provide them, that his best will never be close to what Peter should have. To know that Peter is about to ask him if he can join the decathlon, and Bucky will have to tell him no again. Bucky? Bucky lets his arm slip off Peter's shoulder, quietly sighing. Yeah. What's Captain Miracle like? Surprised, Bucky raises an eyebrow down at him, taking a back. What? Peter glances up, meets his gaze, his expression eager and awake and starry-eyed. I mean, is he, you know, was he really captain-y? Like, all serious and bossy and stuff? Or is that just when he's out on missions? Is he bigger in person? We're about the same size. Bucky says, glancing around them anxiously, making sure no one is close enough to hear. Why? Oh, well, Peter says, blushing slightly. No, no reason. I just, um, I was just wondering, since he's, you know... Sorry, I thought that since it's not really about your past and all, I thought you wouldn't mind. Sorry. Bucky sighs, lowering his gaze to the sidewalk as he feels Peter deflate beside him. I don't mind, he says tentatively, feeling guilty. He's actually a lot like you. Peter perks up, surprised and intrigued in equal measure. What? He exclaims, eyes wide. Like me? How? Smiling, Bucky gives his head a small shake as a chuckle rises in his throat. A good sense of right and wrong, and a crappy sense of self-preservation. Do you miss him? Bucky almost stumbles, shooting Peter a quick look to see the boy gazing up at them curiously. 
but with something warm and sympathetic coloring his expression. "'You guys were best friends, right?' Peter asks quietly. "'Even if you had a fight or, or whatever happened, it still must be hard not being friends anymore, right?' Fist clenching, Bucky turns away from Peter, stares straight ahead as they walk, trying desperately to keep his face neutral. Yeah, he says, voice layered with more emotion than he'd like. I've had to get used to a lot of difficult things in this century, but... He swallows his throat, feeling like it's closing up. Being without Steve has easily been the hardest. Their lives begin to feel both much calmer. And way more hectic at the same time as late spring turns to early summer. Peter only has a few more weeks until summer vacation and spends most of his free time studying to prepare for finals when he's not patrolling the streets or being dragged into a training session. Bucky is hard at work at the dealership and also at trying to solve his latest and most daunting dilemma. Peter's birthday! With the boy's 15th only days away, Bucky still has no idea what to do. Or if he's even within his rights to do anything, he doesn't even know if Peter wants to celebrate it, let alone how they should. But he's been working overtime while Peter puts in extra hours tutoring at school, and the money he's saved up from doing so sits secretly under the floorboards in their apartment, waiting for Bucky to make up his mind. Whoa, what does he like to do? Frank asks him in response to Bucky openly lamenting about being crappy at picking out gifts. Get him something you know he likes, and he'll be more touched to learn that you pay attention to him than by how much money you spent. Kids are sentimental like that. Buggy's hand stills on the wrench he's holding, halfway through tightening a bolt. Frank is right. He hasn't even met Peter, and yet he just gave Buggy the perfect idea of what to do. It's the middle of the evening by the time Bucky leaves work, and he makes several stops on the way home, picking up everything he needs for the plan. When he's a few blocks from their apartment, Bucky pulls out his cell phone and dials Peter's number. Hello? The boy answers on the second ring. Hi. Bucky says a smile rising to his face at the sound of Peter's voice. You been home? Oh, yeah. Peter says a little distractedly, no doubt with his head still shoved in a textbook. What's up? You been at school all day. Bucky says, glancing up at the park sign next to him. I'd probably study since you got home, knowing you. You should take a break. I'm on my way home. Come meet me at the park. Uh, okay. The one on second? Yeah. Bucky says already moving to leave the park entirely. Ten minutes. Okay. Peter says again a little more cheerfully. See you soon. See you soon. Bucky says then hangs up and darts across the street to the other side, heading back to the apartment the long way, the way he knows Peter won't be heading. He feels slightly guilty about misleading the kid, but there's no way he'll be able to stash his purchases in the apartment without the kid seeing him if he's at home. Bucky hefts his bag through the front door and makes quick work of lifting the loosened planks of wood that cover the kitchen, revealing his baga bag, his savings, his old journals, and his gun. Bucky carefully lays his items amongst his other hidden sundries and closes the floor back up before quickly and purposefully exiting the apartment. He takes a shortcut back to the park and stops at an ice cream stand by the fountain in the middle before heading to the bench where he knows Peter will be waiting. Peter sees him almost immediately from down the path and jumps up from the bench, eyes wide and smile wider, bounding up to him so happy to see him like always. There you are! Sorry. Bucky says, grinning, handing Peter a comb. There was a line. It's okay, Peter assures, taking the ice cream from him eagerly. Thanks, this is awesome. What's the occasion? The occasion is we've both been working hard, and if you stick your head any further into one of your textbooks, I'm going to lose you in there. Ha <laughs> ha, Peter says, trying and failing to look unamused, his smile widening even more as he gratefully takes a lick of his ice cream. This is great. He says with a sincere, appreciative look that he gives to both Bucky and the cone in his hand. I've missed doing stuff like this lately. Yeah, Bucky agrees, taking Peter by the shoulder and leading him back over to the bench. Me too, kid. And speaking of, I wanted to talk to you about Saturday. Oh, uh... Peter glances back up at him. Because... because it's my birthday? He asks. No, actually, the rodeo was it down and I think you should audition. Bucky eyes him, smirking at the flat... Unimpressed look on the boy's face. Yes, because it's your birthday. We don't have to do anything, Peter says quickly in a somewhat bashful tone. Ned invited me to spend the night if I don't have other plans. I was thinking we could go somewhere. 
Bucky says, pleased by the excited glint Peter gets in his eyes. You can invite Ned. We can go to that planetarium you said you wanted to see. And then I thought of taking you to Coney Island. Peter's whole face lights up, his brown eyes shining, his back is straightening like he can barely contain himself. I've never been able to do Coney Island! What? Bucky asks, confused. What do you mean? Peter gestures down at himself, face reddening. Before I was, you know, before I changed, I was always really, uh, wimpy, I guess. I was pretty frail and weak and I couldn't do a lot of stuff. I got sick easily and had respiratory problems, and my aunt and uncle were always afraid I'd, like, pass out on the rides and fall to my death or something. So I've been there, but all we really did was walk around and eat food, and we couldn't stay long because the heat got to me. Bucky stares straight ahead, mind reeling, completely floored to learn that Peter is so like Steve, so uncomfortably similar to him, that Bucky genuinely wonders if there's some way the two could be related, and how the hell he ended up with another Steve after 70 years of no Steve at all. Peter, oblivious to Bucky's inner tangent, continues gleefully rambling. But now I could actually go on the rides and walk around the park for longer than 20 minutes. Are you sure you don't mind if I invite Ned? I think that'd be a lot of fun. I'm sure. Bucky says, giving him a fun smile. I told him it's my treat. Really? The boy asks a bit sheepishly. But I mean, shouldn't we? Are you sure it's okay? We need to be saving up, right? Can we afford to be, you know, wasteful like that? It's not a waste, kid. Bucky says, still smiling, feeling warm from the sun and the joy on Peter's face. It's good to have celebrations now and then. He reaches over, gently ruffles the kid's hair. And we have a lot to celebrate. The temptation to put his palm flat on top of Peter's head and push down until the boy is forced to stand still is almost too great for Bucky to overcome as the two of them stand waiting at the train station. Peter is an uncontrollable ball of energy, pacing and tapping his feet to the sidewalk, drumming his fingers against his thighs, bouncing his leg up and down randomly. He seems lost in his own world, childlike glee painted all over his face, continuously interrupted by the brief glances he sends over the crowds of disembarking passengers waiting for his friend. Buggy regards him silently, equal parts daunted and impressed that the kid is so excited for the big day. Remind me to never give you caffeine, he says to Peter, which snaps the boy out of his enthusiastic jittering. Sorry, Peter grants, not really looking all that sorry. I can't help it, this is so awesome! I'm going to make you ride the cyclone, Bucky promises almost to himself. That should wear you out a little bit. The kid laughs, his face changing into a playful expression. It can't be any worse than swinging from whims every night. I think I can handle it. Before Bucky could disagree with him, a friendly, high pitched voice calls out, Peter! from across the terminal. They both turn to look and watch as a portly Asian kid lightly jogs up to them, smiling and waving. Hey! Hey, man! Peter smiles to his friend. Bucky looks between the two kids and notices to his genuine surprise that Ned is actually somehow shorter than Peter, even if only by an inch. Thanks for coming! Don't cross! Happy birthday! And thanks for inviting me, Ned says before turning toward Bucky and craning his neck to look up at him. Oh, oh, thank you too, Peter's done. Peter goes very still and very pale, staring at Ned's face incredulously before chancing a nervous look up at Bucky. Bucky plays it cool, swallowing the same lurch in his stomach he got the first time Ned called in that over the phone and says smoothly, You're welcome. Peter's told me a lot about you. Peter laughs a little awkwardly, and the strain in his voice is palpable as he tries very hard to act normal. Ned doesn't seem to notice it at all, and hands Peter a brightly colored gift bag with a cheerful, This is for you! Oh, oh! Peter blinks, surprised. Wow, thanks! You didn't have to get me anything! Actually, I totally did, says Ned, pointing at the bag. I got you your own, so you won't have to borrow mine three times a month. Peter lifts a confused brow, then reaches into the bag and pulls out a familiar box. Ned! He exclaims, face breaking into a wide, disbelieving grin. I don't believe this! This is awesome! He turns the box around so Bucky can see, angling it so that the harsh train station lights aren't reflecting off its glossy finish, allowing Bucky to read the bright yellow Star Wars box set title printed on it. 
Still grinning, Peter gives Ned a one-armed hug around the neck, patting his back. Thanks, man, I love it! Figured it was appropriate since we're hitting up the planetarium and all. Speaking of, Mikey says, grabbing the boy's attentions as he points at an approaching train. That's our train. Bucky contentedly lets Peter and Ned lead the conversation, more than happy to simply listen to them ramble and debate as they make the journey to the planetarium. It's interesting watching Peter interact with someone else, someone his own age, someone who is just as bubbly and talkative as he is. Some of the things Ned says make it feel like Bucky's lugging around two Peters. So many parts of their speech patterns are the same. Not a surprise, given how much time they spend together. Peter and Ned steadily grow more hyper and excited the closer they get, to the point that they practically dash off the train when it arrives at their stop. Bucky leisurely walks off after them, earning an eager and slightly impatient, Come on! from Peter when he notices how far behind them Bucky is. So just for the fun of it, Bucky smirks and says, Actually, wait here, I need to head to the bathroom. He has to bite down on the bark of laughter that threatens to escape at the... Are you kidding me? Look on Peter's face as Buggy turns and heads down the terminal hallway, giving the boys a small wave as he does. He spends a little extra time at the sink in the bathroom, making sure his hair is pulled down over his forehead and his sweater isn't slipping low enough around his neck to expose the metal plate that makes up his entire left shoulder. The black glove covering his left hand isn't exactly inconspicuous, but it's not as memorable as the bare metal of his prosthetic would be. With his facial hair growing in thicker, the perfect halfway point between stubble and an actual beard, he feels a little more confident venturing into somewhere as crowded and busy as Luna Park, at least for one day. He knows he's capable of hiding in plain sight if he has to, if it comes to that. Satisfied that he looks about as far from Sergeant James Barnes as he can get, Bucky makes his way down the hall toward where he told Peter and Ned to wait, but stops just before the mouth of the hallway, picking up on Ned's voice from around the corner. Dude, you were right, Ned says, sounding oddly awestruck. Your dad is so freaking cool. Bucky leans against the wall out of sight, surprised and amazed. When Peter laughs and gushes, I told you! The pride overflowing from his voice, You don't even know Ned! He's like the coolest person I've ever met! Well, the mention jerked, says Ned, making Peter laugh. Seriously, man, his biceps have biceps! How much does he work out? I don't know. Peter tries his best to sound oblivious, but he can tell, but they get really sucks at lying. He does do this one awesome thing, though. We go for jogs and stuff in the evenings because. Because he's helping me get better at fitness for gym class. And so sometimes we'll do training exercises and we'll be out in public without any equipment. So he can do a bicep curl while lifting me. Awesome! Ned practically sighs, speaking under his breath like he's completely blown away. Man, you're lucky. You got the coolest foster dad in New York. Yeah, says Peter. And the sincerity in his small voice tugs at Becky's heart. I know. I know exactly how lucky I am. Do you? Ned starts but pauses, as if not sure how to frame his question. Do you think he'll, like, adopt you? Bucky goes very still, subconsciously holding his breath as he plasters himself against the wall. Peter is quiet for a long moment, and Bucky's mind races at what the boy will say, terrified of what he might hear, even if part of him wants to hear Peter say it. That's what birthday wishes are for, I guess. The rest of the day goes smoothly, but it goes by in a haze for Bucky. Peter and Ned seem to have a good time, laughing and joking as they explore the vastness of the universe and the known vacuum of space from inside a giant dark dome. The boys make a nerdy game of quizzing each other about planetary trivia, challenging each other in that timeless way boys do, but with a friendly supportive atmosphere to it, both of them smiling and congratulating each other whenever one of them gets a question right. Bucky lets Peter drag him over to all of his favorite displays, the ones he's most fascinated with, the NASA demonstrations and models, and the astrophysics presentation, chattering endlessly about stars and space travel, and surprisingly only mentioning Star Wars a dozen times or so. But try as he might, Bucky is only half paying attention, guiltily recalling the gifts he has stored back at their apartment beneath the floorboards, knowing now that it's not what Peter is wishing for, and that it's the best Bucky can do, and hating that those two things aren't the same. 
He'll need a lot more than a stolen ID to ever give Peter what he really wants, and the idea of that seems so much like an unreachable fantasy that it weighs on Bucky heavily. The weight doesn't lift as they leave the planetarium and stop for lunch, and it doesn't lift as they commute to Coney Island, but oddly, as they step through the entrance to Luna Park, and Bucky glances over at Peter and sees the pure, unrestrained excitement on the boy's face, as bright and glowing as the flashing lights on the rides around them, he finds some semblance of confidence. Peter deserves everything he wants and more, and Bucky will probably never be able to give him anywhere close to that, but there are things he can do for him, Things only he can do for him. And if this thrown-together mess of a life is enough for Peter, then it's enough for Bucky, too. His resolve renewed. Bucky makes good on his promise and leads the boy straight to the cyclone, patting Peter's shoulder reassuringly as the boy blinks owlishly up at the roller coaster. They've changed it, Bucky remarks, gaze contouring the giant structure. When I was your age, I swear this thing was held together with duct tape and dental floss. Ned laughs, but Peter glances up at him like he isn't sure if Bucky is kidding or not. Oh, yeah. P- Bucky tells him, nodding solemnly, this thing was a death trap. The only people who ever wrote it were young, dumb guys daring each other to take the risk. Maybe we should go on the Ferris wheel instead? Ned suggests limply, taking a subtle step back away from the lineup. Nope, says Bucky, taking both kids by the shoulder and walking them straight to the back of the line. Write a passage, boys. Today you become men. Why can't we just go through puberty like everyone else? Cries Ned, forcing a laugh out of both Bucky and Peter, especially when the woman in front of them turns around and looks at Ned like he's some raving lunatic. It won't be that bad, Bucky assures. And he's right. As far as he and Peter are concerned, anyway. Wanna go on the Ferris wheel next? Peter gently asks his friend as they exit the ride, whose pale, sweaty complexion vaguely reminds Bucky of the last time he forced someone onto this thing. (laughs) Ned groans in response, and Bucky fetches a bottle of water for the poor kid from the nearest food stand. Here, Bucky says as he hands the bottle over. If you want to just sit still for a little while, there's a couple of benches over by the petting zoo. Predictably, Peter whips his head up and fixes Bucky with that thrilled, sparkly-eyed look of his... After Ned settles this stomach relaxing on the bench and Peter gets his fill of playing with a herd of goats and a warren of rabbits, the three of them continue their tour of the park, Ned handling the less extreme rides much better than he did the cyclone. They stack up on greasy, overpriced fair food and snacks, Peter wanting the full Coney Island experience on his first real trip to the park. They walk around to play games as they eat, and Ned is consistently impressed with Peter's knack for winning the rigged carnival games. By the end of it, both Ned and Peter have their arms full of ugly, cheaply made stuffed animals, and Bucky ends up carrying Peter's gift bag from Ned and their drinks as they make their way out of the park. A man walking with three younger children makes eye contact with Bucky, gestures to all the crap he's carrying while his kids are only holding their ice cream cones, and gives him a friendly, What are dads for, eh? as they pass each other, nodding to Bucky's own full arms. The trip back to the station, where Ned has to transfer trains to get home, goes by smoothly, and the boys say their goodbyes with a hug and another thank you from Peter. Ned waves at Bucky as they get off the train, calling out, Bye, Peter's dad! Thanks again for inviting me! Bucky waves back, and then the doors are closing, and the train is moving, and he slashes appreciatively into his seat, Peter following suit, leaning against his shoulder as he fiddles with the spindly arms of his hideous monkey-stuffed animal. Thanks for today, Bucky, Peter says with a contented sigh, relaxing further against his side. I've had a lot of fun. This is the best birthday I've ever had. I'm glad you had fun, kiddo, Bucky says, lifting his arm and wrapping it around Peter so he can snuggle into him. But it's not quite over yet. I have another surprise for you. Really? Peter asks, looking up at him with surprise. But what? we did so much today. Day's not over yet. Bucky grins, unable to hide his own bubble of excitement that swells inside of him. We've still got your patrol, and then training after. Peter groans, turning his face into Bucky's arm and hiding it in his sleeve. Do we have to do training today? I think not falling off the side cringe would count. Bucky chuckles, patting the kid's shoulder. Don't worry, kid. Today's a little different. It'll be fun. Different how? It's a surprise. 
Peter accepts that answer until they get home, and then Bucky has to essentially kick him out to get him to stop asking questions. Go do your patrol, and when you're done, meet me on the rooftop of 11th and 31st, okay? Bucky says, sending Peter's disturbing zoo of stuff to critters on the love seat next to his Star Wars box set. Okay, Peter says, but he eyes Bucky in the room, curiously. The gears turning beneath that mop of curls to try and deduce what the surprise is. Sounds good, kid. Be safe. You too, Peter says, slipping his mask and goggles on and waiting until the coast is clear off the balcony before he deftly leaps onto the roof and then he's off. Bucky pulls the gifts out of the secret cavity beneath the floor and places them in an empty garbage bag, slinging it over his back to carry easily as he makes his way to their rendezvous location. It's not much of a wrapping job, but the air of mystery and surprise will still be there when Peter opens the bag, he supposes. Bucky sets the bag down by the edge of the rooftop and then sits patiently on the railing, waiting. He doesn't wait long, seeing Peter come flying from blocks away. Peter lands eagerly on the railing across the roof from him and slips off his mask as he bounds up to Bucky, eyeing the bag curiously. Hi, he says, stopping in front of Bucky and the garbage bag lying at his feet. Hi. Bucky smiles warmly. You ready? Peter looks up from the garbage bag and nods excitedly. Yep! All right then, open it. Peter gives him one last quizzical look before he bends down and lifts the mouth of the bag. Bucky smiles at the puzzled expression that crosses Peter's face as he reaches in and pulls out a wooden bat. Are we... He starts hesitantly. Are we going to start weapons training now or something? No. Bucky chuckles. There's more inside the bag. Keep going. Peter does and opens the bag as wide as it can to reveal the old ball and the two worn-down mitts. Baseball? He asks, confused, looking up at Bucky with one eyebrow raised. Yeah, Bucky says, smiling again. I thought I could teach you how to play. Work it into the training regimen now and then. And since summer vacation is almost here, you'll need stuff to do all day. Going to the batting cages and trying to go a few rounds without breaking anything would be good practice at considering your strength. We could practice on the diamonds in the meantime. Peter picks up one of the leather gloves, turning it over in his hands, running his fingers along the stitched seams reverently. This is awesome! He practically whispers, then looks up at Bucky and grins that beaming smile that Bucky loves so much, and jumps to his feet so he can search forward and wrap his arms around Bucky's neck in a tight hug. Bucky hugs him back warm and securely. Happy birthday, Peter. Thank you, Peter says into his shoulder, arms tightening. For this and for today, I'm really excited. This sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's all my kid. Bucky says, giving him a pat on the back and then letting him go. This stuff is in good condition, but it's still used, so it doesn't really matter if one of us accidentally uses our super strength and shatters the ball or something. Peter stills for a moment, an odd look flashing across his face, but then it's gone as quickly as it came. Bucky opens his mouth to ask what's up, but Peter holds the glove out to him and asks, Can we play now? The hopeful tone in the kid's voice interrupts Bucky's plan of asking, and the man smiles and takes the glove, ruffling Peter's hair with his metal hand. Sure say, kiddo. Bucky collapses exhaustedly on the love seat when they arrive back home, and Peter is quick to follow, sprawling on top of his sleeping bag beside the man, knocking most of the stuffed monstrosities to the floor. Hey, um... Peter starts a few minutes later, a little nervously. I've been wondering something. I know it's not... I know you said you can't talk about what... what happened after the war, but... I just want to know, you're, you're like me, right? Buggy blinks, rouse furrowing slightly in confusion as he turns and looks at the boy. Like you. Yeah, you know, enhanced. Frowning, Bucky turns his face away in hopes that Peter won't see the way his jaw has tightened at the question. This isn't exactly the conversation he wants to be having after the great day they had, and certainly not on a day that's supposed to be about celebrating Peter, but... He sighs, giving the boy a small nod, not wanting to open his mouth and say something he can't take back, give the kid too much information, and put him even more at risk. I knew it! Peter whispers, his eyes wide and full of admiration. I knew you were a superhero! 
Baggy Absa Imrela's laugh more caught off guard than anything, and bows his head slightly as incredulity fills him. I'm no hero, kid. But you're an aunt, says Peter insistently, voice soft and unwavering. And you're... You were friends with Captain America, and he's like the ultimate superhero, and you are None of those things make me a hero, Bucky says, swallowing thickly. His nerves feel like they're on fire, burning uncomfortably from listening to Peter sing his praises without knowing anything about him at all, how wrong he is, how backwards. It fills him with immense guilt and even more shame to know that he's lying to Peter by omission, letting the kid believe he's a better man than he is, that he's good, that he's like Peter. The kid seems to pick up on his discomfort and says more gently, but no less adamantly, You save people. That's what makes you a hero. Isn't that why you joined the Howling Commandos? Unintentionally, Bucky tightens his hand into a fist, leaning forward to rest on his knees. Things like this are the hardest to remember, how he felt about things decades ago, his drives, his motivations. He spent so many years thinking only in facts, in events, and their outcomes, choices, and their consequences. The result of joining Steve's team as his sergeant and not the cause, the reason lost to him now. He doesn't know how to answer Peter, so he sighs and gives him the half-truth, a cop-out. I don't know. Peter regards him quietly, observing him in that soft, sincere way of his, wise beyond his years, his dark eyes searching Bucky's face as if reading him, as if he can tell how the man is feeling just by the sight of him. Do you regret it? The boy suddenly asks gently, his voice small but still endlessly curious. Following Captain America, I mean... Bucky stiffens. Deep down, some ancient slumbering part of himself roars to life with a determined and deafening NO! So insulted by the idea that he could ever regret following Steve anywhere. But the rest of him, the newer parts of him, the pieces that have been forcibly assembled to make him who he is now instead of who he used to be, all come together and mourn angrily. It's not regret, but it's just as insidious, just as overbearing, more akin to sorrow and shame, to despair. The only thing Bucky regrets is surviving that fall. He sighs, unable to bring himself to look at Peter. A lot of good people would still be alive if I hadn't. He admits that instantly wishes he hadn't, knowing he's opened the floodgate for Peter now, invited him to ask for clarification, getting closer and closer to the truth about him, about Hydra. But Peter says nothing for a long moment. Then, unsure, like he doesn't know if he should or not, he looks up at Bucky and very quietly says, I wouldn't. Bucky turns and looks at him, struck by the implication of what the boy just said and Peter gazes back up at him with his dark, hopeful eyes, so unbearably trusting. Panic wells inside of him with a devastating force, knowing that Peter is right, that if Bucky hadn't been there that night, that guy would have taken Peter from him before Bucky even met him. Agony he spears Bucky open right through the middle at that thought. What would have happened if he hadn't been there, if he'd gone down a different street that night? not even turning his head at the sound of a gun firing a few blocks away, if he had minded his own business and gone straight home, not caring at all for the child he had just lost without even realizing it. That if he didn't have this arm, this thing that used to only be a weapon of Hydra, he might not have been able to save this kid. He never would have known Peter at all. Peter picks up on the lost, speechless discourse surging through Bucky like he always does, and tries to give him a reassuring expression, his smile gentle and comforting, as he says, Even if bad things happen to you, even if you did bad things, that doesn't make the good things you've done any less good, Bucky. It doesn't make you any less of a hero. Bucky shakes his head, wanting to change the subject, but the guilt and the shame and the desire for Peter to know that he's wrong about him are too much, and he closes his eyes with a depressed sigh. I see a lot of things when I look at myself, kid. His voice deepens, grows rougher, spiteful in spite of himself. But I don't see a hero. Peter's voice is small and sweet and a little sad. I do. When Bucky meets his eyes this time, Peter smiles at him shyly, his expression soft and full of love. 
anguish and a fierce unbreakable feeling of affection for this kid next to him, Bill's monkey. And he lays his metal hand on the boy's shoulder and pulls him in, wrapping it around his back, holding him to his chest. I'll never let anything happen to you, Bucky mentally promises himself, his hand tightening in the back of Peter's hoodie as he hugs him tighter. His eyes clench shut, trying to keep the emotions at bay, scared that if he gives in now to the temptation of letting Peter see him fall apart, he'll never be able to go back. He has to hold it together, not just for himself, not for his own survival, but for his child. He'll do anything to be the hero Peter needs him to be.